Hi there, um, you join me, I'm in sunny Birmingham and um, I'm here to speak to Phil Riley, the Chief Executive of Orion Media, who has just completed um, a long drawn out uh, acquisition process of uh, eight uh, li radio licences in the area. So I'm going to speak to the man himself about um, well, the process. C could you begin by maybe explaining to us what, how it all came about? Sure, well the, b the background to the deal is that uh, uh, when Global Radio uh, which was formed out of the purchase of Chris Liss's radio assets, which I used to run. Mm -hmm. But when that was formed a couple of years ago, they, uh, about six, seven months later, launched a takeover bid for GCAP. Uh, and that uh, deal completed uh, just over a year ago. And as a result of that merger between two of the big players in UK radio, the Office of Fair Trading said, well, that's OK, but in the Midlands, you just own too many radio stations, so you're going to have to sell some of them to somebody else, so there's some local competition. Um, so after negotiating with the OFT, uh, Global put up a package of radio stations for sale, mm -hmm. which included five FMs here in the Midlands, and actually three AMs that are also in the Midlands. So it was a combination of the heritage stations in, in the West Midlands, Beacon in Wolverhampton, BRMB here in Birmingham, mm -hmm. Mercia in Coventry and Wyvern, uh, three AMs to cover Wolverhampton, Birmingham and Coventry, and then Hart 106 in the East Midlands. Mm -hmm. So that was the package, the bundle of stations that Global put up for sale, and th that uh, sale process kicked off uh, sort of August, September last year. And I'd been thinking about the, the, the opportunity since about May, June, because it was obvious that there's something like this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, personally, I've been working on this deal for well over a year by the time we actually completed uh, at the end of last month. And um, was it as arduous as it sounds? That sounds like a, a very long... It long was, time. actually. It was, a it was a very complex deal. Um, I think because uh, it was a forced sale, and I don't think anybody that's being forced to sell something really you know, d goes at it with the same degree of passion and urgency as somebody when, when somebody wants to sell something they obviously really try very hard when it's a for sale yeah. it becomes more difficult for all sorts of reasons mm -hmm. um, uh, particularly when you're trying to extract stations from a group where actually they don't naturally form a sensible um, separate body that you can just cut easily and separate off they're very well connected so that's added a complication and of course this is all done against the background of a, uh, an unbelievably deteriorating uh, media situation which made it much more complex for uh, potential purchasers and backers to value the assets. You sure. know, it's very difficult to put a sensible value on something when the revenue performance is going down and down and down every month because the media marketplace is, is suffering. So all of that meant it was a very complicated deal. Well, you mentioned just how, I mean, how fragmented media has become. Why did that make this such an attractive option in such a difficult period then? Well, I think for, uh, for, for me, uh, uh, the attraction of the deal was these are great radio stations in a part of the country that I know extremely well. Mm -hmm. uh, I started my career here at BRMB, and you know, I've known the station for 30 years, competed against it, worked for it, so a bit like a homecoming for me. Um, and I think because of that, that me and the team that I built around me felt that we could we could really do something with these stations and try and you know bring them back to you know sort of you know, some form of strength because I think they'd been neglect neglected is the wrong sense of the word but I think they'd not been well uh, um, well catered for by the GCAP merger which is five years ago and then obviously once Global bought GCAP that whole separate meant no one was really paying a lot of attention to them so I think from our perspective we thought there's a lot to be done here a lot we can do uh, and uh, you know I think we managed to persuade uh, our backers that, that that was worth them investing in as well and our backers are LDC who are a private equity firm um, but it's their Birmingham office so it's not a London private equity firm doing this deal it's a local uh, uh, office people yeah. who know the Midlands who know these radio stations because they grew up with them mm -hmm. and who therefore can see the potential in them in the same way that uh, I and the rest of my management team can. Well uh, that, that was another question I was going to ask you did the fact that they were in the locale make it an easier deal? It did because I have to be honest when you know when I was talking I've talked to lots of private equity firms when I was trying to put the deal together and you know you spend the first half of any meeting with them explaining to them that BRMB is based in Birmingham, the initials don't actually stand for anything, 
the beacons in Wolverhampton that Wolverhampton's different to Birmingham and they've got different uh, you know and at the end of it you then get quite dispirited because you think boy you know these people just don't know anything about the, the stations whereas with the LDC guys they grew up listening to Beacon or BRMB. They mm. knew the heritage of these stations. They knew all about the Two Strangers in the Wedding or the Walkathon or Party in the Park, all the historic things that the radio stations had done, they knew about. So that just made it so much easier to, to convince them that actually there was a uh, you know, real, real business opportunity here. Yeah. And um, just how strong is the industry then, uh, the regional radio industry, not just in uh, well, I think overall in the industry, uh, you know, radio is pretty strong. In this region, um, it's a very com competitive region. I would say the most competitive, um, alongside Manchester. I think the West Midlands is the most competitive region outside of London. And in fact, I'd argue it's probably more competitive than uh, than Manchester because in yeah, in places like Manchester and probably Central Scotland, you've got a complex. Uh, network of local stations mm. and regional stations. Right. You've got the same thing here um, uh, with local stations and regional, but the regional stations, because it's a much more cohesive region, the West Midlands, because mm. you know, literally you can drive to from Birmingham to Wolverhampton and not see much of a green field, you know, it's a single conurbation. The regional stations are serving the same conurbation. Mm. Now in Manchester, the regional stations like Real Radio, um, uh, for example, or sm smooth, are serving Manchester and Liverpool and Lancashire, very distinct patches. So they've got a different feel, they're talking about different things some of the time. Whereas here, the West Midlands is one unit. So it makes the competition between the big local station like BRMB and the big regional station like Hart that much more intensive. So it's a much tougher market to operate in. Better for listeners, tougher for the operators. So what plans do you have now that the deal's finalised? Are we going to see much difference in, in the stations or are you planning on just continuing as norm? Well, we're, we're not planning on anything uh, uh, like a brand change. You know, these stations will continue to be called Beacon and b and yeah. and Mercy and Wyvern uh, in the West Midlands and Hart. We've licensed the Hart brand off global for the East Midlands and that will stay as is. Yeah. Um, but are we going to you know, try and do things differently in order to shake up the market? Yes, of course we are. Um, and the recent history of the stations, and, and BRB particularly, is not great from a radio perspective. We, we recognise that. We recognise we're buying, um, you know, with BRB in particular, a station where we need to give it some TLC. We need to fix some of the things that have gone wrong. So, yeah, sure, we're going to you know, take a good look at, the, at everything about the station and where we think we can improve it. We will. Are you able to highlight anything you're looking to change? Ah, that would be, it would be unfair of me to, uh, to try and give away some of the secrets about what we're going to do before we've... Uh, we finalised them. We've only just announced a new programme director for here, a guy called Paul Kay, mm -hmm. who's moving uh, from Wyvern, where, where he was when we first uh, started looking at the stations. Um, Paul's one of the sort of you know really sharp, bright young programmers in the UK, and uh, he's obviously got some ideas. Yeah. Uh, so he and David, our group programme director, are you know, literally sitting down now and going through those ideas. So it's all very exciting, but nothing I can reveal to the drummer, I'm afraid. Oh, well, we tried. <laughs> Um, what, what does this mean for Orion Media then? What do you hope uh, this will well, develop the company into? Well, I, I, we, we don't have any aspirations in terms of acquisitions or going out and being... We, we, we're not going to be the biggest radio company in the UK. We're probably not going to be the most high profile. We're not based in London. We don't have an office in Leicester Square or Golden Square. We're not you know, going to generate lots of column inches. Mm -hmm. uh, our hope is that we can become the biggest noise around here, the biggest player in, in the Midlands by improving the stations that we've got. We've got every potential, we've got the you know, we've got the right stations to start with. Mm -hmm. Our job is just to make sure that they perform well, that our uh, listeners enjoy what they hear, that the advertisers get the benefits of advertising with us and that we give them great service and if we can satisfy listeners and clients alike, we, you know, we'll have done it will have done a good job for our shareholders. Do you think that's going to be a tough challenge then? I think it will be very tough. I don't think um, uh, I don't think anything's ever easy. Mm. I think radio is a it's a very tough uh, business to you know move people's perceptions because uh, people are tremendously loyal to the stations they like listening yeah. to. So if you if you've lost listeners, it's a hard job to pull them back. Mm. So that's a big that's a big ask for us. Um, and I think as well for clients, you know, you, if you find a station that works for you, 
that's where you're going to spend your money. So again, we've got a big job to pull pull clients across from from other stations and and other media. But mm. yeah, we we'll we'll get there. We'll do it definitely.